So let's bring Tone in here. And I'll listen to WIP in the morning, and I'm like, oh, you know, they did some things. And I'm like, they did some things because they could have done anything. <laughs> I mean, they did some things. Tone, honest to God, you know what they could have did? They could have ran the ball 72 times and won that game. But yeah, they really that. didn't have to. Yeah, you know, uh, we, you know, we, we spoke about this last week. You, you and I both said this is a game that they're supposed to win handily, right? But w- w- what was the last thing I said to you? That they're going to find a way to make it interesting. And lo and behold, they had us on the edge of our seats. But I still felt in my heart, okay, they're going to win this game. But I felt that. But I felt like that in the Seahawks game. So. I'm, I, 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 I've been saying it, I've been saying it to Rob Ellis all week. Well, I've been saying it to him for the past two or three weeks, and I'll say I'll say it again here. I'm on a week to week proposition with this team. Um, that game should have that game shouldn't have the the, the, the Giants shouldn't have had the Giants shouldn't even scored a touchdown. That's the, the, that's how much of an advantage the Eagles had over them. And all of a sudden, the second half comes, and you got. Pick six. She got a fumble off the opening kickoff. It's just like, come on! It, it, all those things were just a microcosm of how this season is going. You know, things start off well, and all of a sudden, the rug gets pulled right from under you. So, um, did they prove anything to me with that win against the Giants? No. And I, I I've been saying it all last week and a week before that. Is there's nothing they can do, or is there's nothing that they can show me in the next two to three weeks to change how I feel about them? when it comes to the playoffs. So they've lost every opportunity to prove that they can hang with the Niners or the Cowboys. Or they've lost that opportunity. Now it's all about, okay, can you find a way to just get your offense confident again? Can you string together some plays? Can you can you uh, establish some continuity or some pace on the offense? Can you get your defense confident again, right? Can, can you guys string together some good performances to take into the playoffs? Other than that, as far as gauging you against the upper echelon teams, that opportunity is passed. Now, just get into the playoffs and whatever happens, happens. Give me a positive. A positive, I believe that in order for this offense to be as potent and as dangerous as they possibly can, possibly can be, I believe the offense needs to run through Dallas Goddard and DeAndre Swift and everybody else. You're going to get your touches. But I think this offense is more dangerous when Goddard is taking advantage of the middle of the field, he's a mismatch nightmare. I've been saying it for the past several weeks. I think I think you can make an argument he's arguably the most valuable player. He's the most valuable weapon. He's the most difficult cover. In my opinion, I think he is. He's too, he, he, he's too fast or too elusive for linebackers. He's too big for safeties. He's a mismatch nightmare. He, he poses the most difficult matchup out of everybody on that field. You know, A.J. Brown, they're game planning for him. They want to double team him. They want to they, they want to make sure he's not a, a factor of the game. So if you know that, throw in some Tennessee breakers. Get Dallas Goddard going like you did in the Giant. And that that first half, that was probably the most efficient they looked in a while. So and, and, and they were running through Goddard and Swift. And look, that's not taking me saying what I'm saying doesn't take no, no, away no. from AJ I, Brown or or Devontae Smith. Though everybody got if you notice, everybody still managed to eat. But the, but but the game plan started with Goddard and Swift, and that's how I think it needs to go at least for now to at least get this quarterback confident. Get because if you noticed in that game, he was getting the ball out of his hands pretty quickly. Um, he was t- he was quite literally taking what they gave him. If nothing was the open downfield, dump it off to Kenny Gainwell, dump it to Goddard. He even threw the ball to Grant Calcaterra, the, the the second or third string tight end, a few times. Right, so he was. Jalen Hurts was just going through, in my opinion, I felt like he was going through his reads and just, hey, open guy, get rid of the ball. The pressure's coming. The blitz is coming. All right, dump it all to my running back. Go make a play. I felt like Jalen Hurts did not overthink that game yesterday, except for except for um, when he didn't run out of bounds. That was the one moment of the game where I was like, dude, what are you doing? But other than that, I didn't really have too much bad, too, too much bad to say about him. So for me, the positive is, um, DeAndre Swift got, um, you know, involved. DeAndre Swift and Goddard got involved in the offense again. Um, and uh, Hertz seems like he's starting to settle down a little bit. But um, as of right now, the defense, I mean, um, they played all things considered, the defense played well, I guess, except for that one play that they gave up to Slayton over the top. But I got, I, I, I blame the offense and the special teams for the two turnovers. So, 
I, I just, I mean, I wasn't looking at any of that. I was looking at approach because, I mean, my question then comes. Well, that's back. what I mean by the, the approach with Goddard and Swift. Like that yeah, was the process. Yes, that was, I was looking, approach, that yeah, approach was, was different of the Giants. <laughs> yeah, dude, you I could have put Tyler McKee. Is that his name? Yeah, and they, they would have. It would have been Tanner McKee. Tanner McKee. It would have been, been some type of game <laughs> that they could have won. Still, I, 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 I had no. The Giants offered no redeeming competition whatsoever. Right. And it, was tar- it was target practice. It was target practice. Right. And you, and you still found a way to make that hard. I know. And so for me, what I was looking at was play design, um, script, approach. I saw a bunch of series that they went 10 plus plays, which were great. Mm-hmm. And so to me, you kind of started seeing that. And in, in the process of what you said, I said the same thing. Why is he seeing that more with the Giants than he's not seeing that with the Niners and the Cowboys? Surely you got it was open there too. Mm-hmm. Or was that a coaching philosophy that they weren't going to put the line, they weren't going to put the tight end as a focal point in the offense? Why would they make Goddard and Swift? Um, more of a focal point in a game that they could have won by running the ball a hundred times where you needed that approach was in the Niners and in the Cowboy game. And you Mm -hmm. did not have that. Why the change for him to see that? Is it because they're telling him that? And I think it is. I think what they, he has done. And look, here's a prime example of two about the game tone, that 20 yard strike, was off script. Oh, completely. that's hurts. Completely, that's all hurts. Yeah, bro, I would have five to ten plays. Go Jalen, go do it, like Shane <laughs> did. Like I mean, that's you really think that they have massively designed plays for Lamar Jackson, or do you think they tell Lamar, go make a play, son? Yeah, when you got a quarterback like that, right, you're going to have some things that you obviously plan for. You want to but, keep him in the but, guardrails. But, but, but for the most – but guys like that, their superpower is their ability to improvise. Completely. And if you put them in a position to improvise, they can make things happen. Like, like that that 20-yard strike for the first down, a third and 20, that was – That's his best vintage. throw I've ever seen him throw. That's vintage Jalen Hurts. That, that's that, his that, best that's, throw. That, that's him at his best, right? Yep. So – um. I still didn't like the position they put themselves in, right? Third and 20, th- th- that's penalties. You don't want that. Um, but for them to convert that in that situation was huge. Granted, you got to think about who they who they did it against. So, again, I, I went to this game not wor- not concerned about if they would, like, impress yeah, but me because they, the they, they can't. Not I mean, just- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, want, you want to see him making the right decision. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the the biggest takeaway I had from him was his ability to just take what they gave him, and they were able to move the ball relatively no problem because he was patient. I sensed patience in the first half. The third quarter, I sensed impatience because um, after that fumble, you started seeing them kind of. In my opinion, I felt like they started forcing the ball to AJ in that second half, and you started to see the offense sort of lose efficiency at that point. That was that's my humble opinion. I mean, I don't know if the chat or you saw something different, but in the third quarter, especially, I sensed them forcing the ball to AJ, and it's a reason why they weren't efficient because they became predictable in that moment, and then things kind of settled back down again. Do you think that offense would be better or worse without AJ Brown? <laughs> mm, that's a good question. I mean, <clears throat> to oh, have AJ, let me take it to, back. To, to, to have, let me take it back. Do you think Jalen Hurts would be better without? AJ Brown in that huddle. I don't think AJ Brown's the issue. I think the issue is discipline and by the coaches or him. Dis- discipline with the coaches because they, if you notice, they're calling plays for it to, to AJ, right? So I think the discipline has to trickle down. Um, I don't think AJ Brown's the issue. The bottom line is this is the game plan we're running. You don't make game plans, AJ Brown. Your job is to go out there and catch the ball and make the plays that come to you. Simple as that. So again. The discipline has to trickle down from the coaching and then it'll trickle down to the uh, quarterback. So how about this? What you're saying here then is that the coaches fall in love with AJ and it ain't so much Hurts falling in love with him. You know why? It's the coaches because they don't have any skill at what they do. I, I've been saying this over the past several weeks. Is that fair? They, they've written – say that again? 
Is that a, is that fair? The coaches fall in love with AJ. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. You know, I've been saying it all 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 year. I feel like they've, I feel like this coaching staff has gotten by off the talent of this roster. I believe that totally. You know what I mean? And you know what's so interesting? I, I brought this up to Rob, and we didn't really flush it out as much. But I'm curious, what, you know what you think about this, right? You know, the first question I posed was, was is this was this Philadelphia Eagles team ahead of schedule last year? That was the first question I posed, I right? Heard it. And then I took it a step further. I said, okay, if we're not going to say the personnel or the team was ahead of schedule, is it fair to say that maybe we've overestimated Nick Sirianni's contributions to this team? Is he ahead of schedule, right? Is is he did he did he receive more success than he rightfully deserved at that point in his career? Because I'm not seeing where I'm not seeing what he brings to the table from an X and O standpoint. As a matter of fact, I heard that, and you guys, um, like you said, you guys um, walked out of that, and I was, and I, and I hadn't looked at it from that angle, and it's an it's an interesting angle. Are you more shocked? Say they end up the season thirteen and four this year. Last year was fourteen and three, which is not terrible would you be in a grand scheme. Shocked, would you be more shocked with this year's record with personnel at thirteen and four than you were last year's at fourteen and three? That's a good question. Will I be will I be more shocked that they're 13 and 4 this year what knowing what I know? Last year, thinking about it, we were all kind of surprised. Because we didn't we didn't see that coming, right? Yeah. I mean, but the now that we these... looked at this and we didn't we saw all the moves and the new coordinators and all this, because this goes to your point about being ahead of schedule. Maybe it even shocked the organization. Because right. I don't I wonder if the organization really thought that they were going to get out to a 10 and 1 start. No, I don't think they did. I don't think they did either. I think if anything, they were just trying to put themselves in the best position to find out if Jalen Hurts was the guy. I think that was the. I think that was the goal in twenty twenty two. I thought they thought they were going to win games with strictly their offense, as right. the defense was coming around because they weren't as balanced as a year ago. Mm -hmm. So, to your point, they're probably more shocked that they're ahead of pace this year, which they probably yeah. are ahead of pace because guess because what? The, the schedule is hard. The, the schedule is harder hard too. Game. Tone, you've got a way to look at this. Well, we're not going to be any worse than we are right now next year defensively. Yeah, that's we're true. not. We can't get worse than this. That's true. We, right. And so they got to look at it like, well, we're going to be at least better. Dude, say you're 10% better on defense next 5%. year. That's a, <laughs> right. That's a massive improvement, right? Don't you yeah, think? Right, right, maybe, right. maybe it makes you more competitive with the Niners and the Cowboys. If that thing is fifteen percent more improved the next year, so right. to wait and, and and I and I, it's funny. I was I, I went and I grabbed a coke after I thought about that. Thought about that. And I'm like, I wonder how shocked they are where they are, and if they're sitting up in that room and no wonder why they don't really have as a management group sense of panic over it because they're kind of surprised where they are. Mm -hmm. See, maybe that's why management's not uh, overly surprised, but. The coaching staff, to me, still has to be upgraded. And I agree. let me let me let me go here with this, mm -hmm. dude. I I I thought this this coach has completely come unraveled. He's screaming at players and coaches, and you know what's so funny that interaction guys on the between sidelines like that, and you're eleven and four, and you think that that's a good look, doing that publicly when you know privately that's the best way to do. You're not Mike Tomlin, guy. You haven't built that equity up yet. Yeah, it was interesting, right? Um, the play where he uh, he kind of him and it looked like him and Hassan Reddick was going back and forth, but it came after he called a timeout at what was it, fourth and one or something like that. He called a timeout because it was a penalty and it moved them up to the fourth and one. And he called a timeout when they were on the field, they were about to you know hike the ball. I thought Reddick was. I thought Reddick was irritated with the timeout, like, yo, like we 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 had him. Why'd you call the timeout? That's what I that's what I took it as. And then all of a sudden, the fucking next play, they find Darren Waller, you know, for the conversion. So again, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was about between him and Reddick. I just don't know. But to your point about being on the sideline, kind of making a ruckus for no reason. There? What's that about? Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really understand it. Um you know, so sometimes you have guys who believe that they need to. Uh, and he's hollering at his position coach. The, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about when Reddick was there. I, yeah. I didn't under, I didn't understand what is that what was going on in that moment. I didn't understand it. Now someone break it down for me in the live chat, but I didn't understand particularly what was going on between him, Reddick, 
and so on and so forth. But, you know, I'm looking at it like Sirianni, dial it back, dude, because you've done nothing, in my opinion, for you to be yelling at me like that. No. So, so I need him. I need him to dial it back. No, he, he, he has no – the way that he – okay, so let me get this right. In his last three weeks, he's lied to his team, asked his team to lie for him. He's lied to the public. Then he turns around and he's screaming on the sidelines and you're 11 and four to act like you're 11 and four, not four and 11, four and 11 coaches act like that. And this is no, excuse me. I'll take that back. Two and five coaches act like that. Uh, like, as like far as I'm concerned as a head football coach slash play caller, Nick Sirianni will always be a two and five coach. No matter what he does. He has not shown me, and every time he tells me, well, I know I've got my game plan, and he calls the plays. Guess what he's doing? Hey, he's basically anything that goes sideways with his game plan, it's Johnson's fault, but anything that goes good, it's mine. You sound like Howie. <laughs> you know, I think he, I think lately he's been uh, overcompensating. Um, Don't I you find he... it to be a joke? This is what ha- this is what happens when uh, someone slowly starts to get found out for who they really are, and conflict does that. So you know, I look at this team, and uh, I see a team that's slowly starting to see their head coaches uh, not who he claimed himself to be from a coaching standpoint, and also, like I said, I just think Nick Sirianni is benefiting from the talent, man. I I, I, I really believe that. I, I always have for the most part, but now Sirianni's it's the court jester. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, how well do you think Jalen played? Uh, he was decent. He was decent. The, uh, the pick six obviously was damning. Um, other than that, I felt like he was pretty efficient. Um, got the ball out of his hands pretty, um, you know, pretty quickly responded well to the blitz. Um, I don't really have, I don't really have too, I don't really have too many negative things to say except for the, did the, except the for the pick six. And I actually felt like he responded well to the blitzing. Um, he did a good job getting it to the easy guy, the running back or the or the tight end. You know, staying elusive, keeping the play alive. I, f- I felt like he was all right um, responding to the blitzes. He wasn't he wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible. I felt like it was a step in the right direction in responding to the blitzes because he didn't force it down the field. Um, he got it to his running back, got it to the tight end, and just let them make a play. So I could live I could live with those results. Um, two things obviously that that run me the wrong way. Obviously, the pick six. And uh, not running out of bounds um, to such a you know to such a team up for the field goal. They got lucky with the penalty after the fact. So um, I felt like that was a a very awkward situation for him because I've never seen him make that kind of mistake before. And I don't know if that's a sign of something bad to come or if it was just a one off. No, you know what it was. It was a legitimate mistake. He thought he was closer to the sidelines, and he just because he was looking about. And again, you know what that's. About to tone. That's about self preservation. You see guys barreling down on you. You're not going to be doing this, dude. You get decleated like that when you're tiptoeing down that sideline. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I think he thought he was closer to the sidelines and mm-hmm. he just lost his place on the guys do that, man. They do okay. that all the time. And to me, you know, the getting out of bounds now, I, I think you've got to get out sooner. Okay. Yeah, if you're a guy like him, because the ref's not gonna call it the same way if it was like a pocket guy. So and see, here's why the mistake on my why I think it's more of a mistake, but when he went and he went down and where he went down, I know that he thought he was closer. Yeah, but if you're doing self-preservation, you got to get out of bounds sooner than getting the extra yard may cost you the season. I don't need you to get a yard, dude. Even if you lose the giant game, I don't need you. I'd rather lose the giant game than you. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds the yard sooner, man. And, you know, in fairness to him, the moment it happened, he was like, he knew it immediately. He knew it. He knew it immediately. So I'm I'm not going to kill him for it, but it was something that was that it it was, it was mind boggling in the moment. Cause like I, I, he he typically has a higher, a high self awareness like that. So when I, I mean, but other than that, he didn't do anything really in that game to really um, change my opinion drastically. Um, again, the no. pick six was terrible, but I mean, I felt I, I felt like he did enough to win the game, man. You know, I I, I just believe that again as, as a team, it didn't do much. It didn't move the needle for me either way as a team. 
they are who they are. All they can really hope for is to get some kind of continuity and confidence back. But as far as and your luck. playoff standing, you, you got to prove it to me in the playoffs now. It's, it, you lost the opportunity against the Niners. You lost the opportunity against the against the Cowboys. You lost the, the Seahawks. You lost those opportunities, right? I'll put it to you this way. If they or they lost to the Cowboys, they lost to the Niners. If they were to beat the Seahawks and then obviously they beat the Giants this week, I would feel way better about where they are. I feel way better. But I don't because you lost that Seahawks game. Never was the nail in the coffin. So now – I'm just looking at you as a team that's I mean, once you get in, hey, I don't know if you're gonna win or I don't know if you're gonna lose. I just I, I really don't know. 18 turnovers. Has that changed any opinion of him? No, because when Dak threw fifth was it 15 last yep. year, it didn't change my opinion of him. Um if you really and look yet at, some media people started calling him a turnover, turnover machine. machine. And I didn't I didn't really was understand never. that. I, I didn't understand that personally. Um, I mean, now, now obviously, when you're talking to Philip, when you're talking to Cowboys fans, you want to joke about it and say, "Ah, here, you, you, th that's what you do in those little Twitter circles." But in now, reality, Josh Allen is a turnover machine because he does it on a consistent basis. And and that's the and I think that's the difference. Um, because like that's like a narrative in his career. Like you know we, what's we, crazy, Tony? He'll have 22 and um turnovers, and he'll have 51. Well, or he'll yeah, have 45 40 the, yeah, to 50 it's touchdowns. touchdowns. And it's Insane. it's kind of like Brett Favre in a way. It's very, it's very Brett Favre-ish. Um, but yeah, as far as Jalen, I mean, the turnovers obviously they're terrible this year. They're haunting him. I thought they would end somewhere around that Dolphins or um what, what, what games came after that? Um, I thought it would end around week eight, week nine, right? And it kind of just been following him the whole season. Do I think Jalen Hurts is a turnover machine this year? Yes. Do I think he's a turnover machine for his career? No, because he hasn't shown. Um, he's been a starter for three seasons, and he's shown an ability to protect the ball for his first two seasons um, as a starter. Third season, he has to do a better job. So I don't think he's a turnover machine. It doesn't I, hasn't I changed my opinion. Too. Yeah, because, um, again, same thing with Dak. That last year he had more turnovers than games played, you know, it didn't change my opinion of him because I know he doesn't turn the ball over like that. That's just not his MO. So I'm not going to do that for Jalen Hurts either. What if this football team gets the number one seed? They drop it. By the way, I heard you who, say. Who would have thought the 49ers would have lost, too? I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, thought they, I didn't think they were going to win that game. I know you didn't. I, I just, I just for me, I was like, okay, they're hot. They're home. They're going to win this game. good right now. Yeah, maybe maybe um maybe I've underestimated the Ravens these past couple weeks. I think you I have. Did it though. You know what's funny? If you remember right, you told me this was like week five or six. You went like this when I was talking Super Bowl matchups. You went, I'll tell you what, Sills, which would be a really tough. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. He goes, <laughs> I don't know how the Eagle defense would defend Lamar Jackson, and I was like, that's a great call. He's like. Do you, you don't really think the Eagles could defend that guy, do you? And I go, no, I don't. And no, it started good, that time that. where I started point. keeping an eye. And then I'll tell you who's had an impact. Isn't it funny? The two highest paid football players at their respected positions are Warner and Roquan Smith. And mm. I'll tell you what, I get it. They got blasted yesterday. But still, the Niners are, the Niners are a team that are going to be tough for anybody in the NFC playoffs. That Ravens team with Being Roquan looked. Smith playing Mike linebacker, and I gotta say this, Patrick the Eagle Queen. DB coach, that's a hey, the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, unfortunately, is the defensive back coach that's in Baltimore right now. That's a tragic oversight by that organization not elevating that guy when you elevated Brian Johnson and you didn't want to take any kind of counsel from what that guy had seen. You had the top secondary last year in the league. Now you got the worst secondary in the league. Mm -hmm. And now he's got one of the top secondaries in the league. There's no coincidence for that because last year Baltimore was terrible on defense. That's true. That's true. Look, ego is the reason why that man's not in the building. No, no, not his ego, but the team, the, 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 the uh, front office's ego. Pick a coach why ego. Doug Peters is not in that building because of ego. And it, it, there we go again, you know, missing out on a good a good situation because you're so dug in to how you want to do things. Uh, why don't you trust the football people to do football things? Because they don't want football people. They want analytic people. This is this isn't this this isn't IBM. This isn't the this isn't a fortune 
500, you know, this isn't Google but or Amazon. That like, but that, again, that's not an eagle thing. That's a leap thing today. Right, right. You know, the, the, the more money that gets involved with these organizations, with the advertisers and the networks, the more money, the more they're going to start, the more they're treating it like a legit corporation rather than a football team. See, having Jalen Hurts, holy cow, I can't believe I'm going to go here. But bear with me here. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, this is where I always float down that one river that is always on fire tone. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, this is where I, I singe my hair sometimes. Having a quarterback like Dak, Lamar, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes is so important for the organizations in numerous ways. It's not so important any longer about winning the Lombardi. It's about value of franchise. It's about season tickets. It's about mm -hmm. merchandise. It's about views. It's about pre- and post-game shows. It's about the minority dollar that is spent inside. You know one of the most The digital footprint, all those things. Get this. Do you understand when Michael Vick was a starting quarterback in Atlanta, do you know 68% of the season tickets – were bought by minorities and Falcon fans that were minority. 68%. Wow, that's crazy. Of the fan base. And so when they turned around and got white boy Matt Ryan, they got a lot. That thing <laughs> went down to 40%. That's, that's funny. You understand, Tom, what you said? Well, you know, Atlanta, Atlanta is one Atlanta's one of the it's Atlanta's one of the um from a um from a demog from, from a demographic standpoint, Atlanta is one of the blackest cities in, 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 in the country. So that, that makes sense. I totally, hey, totally. But see what you're saying. Carolina, in the South, in the North, okay, white quarterback, black quarterback. Everything is strategically because it's analytically done. It's not done by color. It's done by the greenbacks. Mm. It's done by the cash register. What's best for this? What's best for Colorado? What's best for Chicago? Hmm. What's best for a liberal city down in New Orleans? What it, it they do all of that, and like you said, the business of the NFL is so different now. It's not just about putting a roster together and putting the right. best guys out there on the field. It's not about. It's not just it's about that anymore. About selling tickets too. Not that yeah. you guys would ever have to worry about it. Hell, you you got you guys could put a Martian. At quarterback in, <laughs> in Philadelphia, and that place is going to have sixty nine seven. You could you could put Mother matter. Teresa back. You could put Mother Teresa back there, running back, and we yeah, still gonna show up. There's certain <laughs> cities like they're in Buffalo, okay, that don't. Hey, wait a minute. You think Jalen Hurts would be a good fit in Buffalo as a starting head, a starting quarterback in nah. Buffalo, or do you think <laughs> the guy from Wyoming is a good fit in why? You think that's by design? <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen, man. You you, you to something because uh, I don't see a guy like uh, I don't see a guy like Jim. You like Lamar Jim. Jackson, Lamar <laughs> Jackson in Buffalo, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think of another organization that'd be an odd fit. Like uh, just you know, I'm trying to think, man. The New York Giants, right? They haven't had a a black starter in what? How, long? how about having Aaron Rodgers with his political views in San Francisco? <sighs> I'm going to tell know. you why I think he didn't get the San Francisco job. Here's anti-vaxxer out in California and San Listen, Francisco. All these teams, all these teams weigh their image when they yes. draft guys. They think yes. about all of those things. It's, that's why, perfect example, that's why Jalen Carter fell where he fell. Yes. Because these teams value their image more than talent. That was a clear, that's a clear indication that teams value their image, their public relations, more so than the talent and winning. That's a clear indication. Right there. The Bears could have had him. And they drafted yeah. it and they traded with the Philadelphia Eagles. They needed him. So let me show you something here about Lamar and Jalen this year. Lamar's clearly had a better year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's clearly played better than him. And he's got the best record in the game now. Mm -hmm. Um, Why would look, Steve Biscotti and Eric DaCosta, the new general manager, Ozzy's still in the building, believe it or not, in my right. opinion. Ozzie Newsom over the last 25 years has probably been the best general manager, former player of anybody 
that's been in the league. He has put those Super Bowl champion teams with numerous different coaches, starting quarterbacks. I mean, Tone, he came over in the trans, uh, transition from Cleveland to Baltimore. He did all that. I mean, Ozzie Newsom is still in the building. And remember what his last parting gift was. Do you remember oh. what his last parting gift was out the door? Didn't he draft Lamar? Yeah. 30 second Lamar. pick. 30 second pick. You know yeah. what he said on the way out? You'll thank me. When everyone <laughs> went like this, Tom Telesco, who's been on this program, Tom Telesco asked him to try out at wideout. And he said, no, it's a racist thing. Totally a racist. You didn't ask Tom, Tim Tebow to have a uh, trial for flanker. Yeah, or so, running back or tight end. Or like, halfback yeah. or some shit right. like that. Right, and, and everybody knows Tim Tebow was. You know, he refused to run at the combines because he didn't want to show people, everyone knows he's probably like what the third fastest guy in the league. I mean, when that guy takes off, there was somebody. Uh, there was somebody else that did that too. They did refuse to run at the combine. I can't remember who it was. It was a quarterback. Um, a, a lot. Of, uh, I'm I'm not mad at it though. Like like you you like you don't ask these questions of of, of white quarterbacks to to, to run to, to run routes or whatever to see Never. if they you don't you don't think about it. you don't ask them that at all. You right? know, you ask Peyton Manning to do that. Right. Well, yeah, no, of course not. I mean, he's, a, <laughs> but you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to give an example of a guy. I mean, Tim Tebow was a great example. Um, like, you, you know what it is? Like they, cause a lot of these uh, guys like Edelman, he was a former coach quarterback, right? Players differently. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, um, Edel, like Edelman and Amadola, weren't they former quarterbacks back in yeah. the day? And they never asked them to turn up to those guys. Let's go turn to receivers. But you know what they said? They said, "Look, I want to play in the league, so I want to change my position." See, like the, the white, the white players, they they get that luxury to just choose. Um, black quarterbacks, when you no. have some speed on you, and and they question your ability to quarterback, they say, I "Well, Ward was a receiver. I mean, was a quarterback." Really, I never yeah. knew that. Heinz Ward, I never, was I never knew that. Art Monk. I never knew that. You know, it's, it's so funny. Like, see. Guys changing positions isn't the anomaly. It's when you try to ask guys to change their position because you think they are not capable of playing a certain position. And that's he didn't want a Heisman. He didn't want a Heisman. He didn't want a Heisman for being a guy playing wide out. Come on, man. Him he and Louis, the Heisman Lamar Jackson at Louisville at was insane. How did they allow Lamar Jackson to leave Florida? Oh my God! How did they allow oh, that? That burns me. How did they let that young man? Leave Gino too. How? Gino too. I don't understand what's going on. Do you know there. those two guys played against one another this year? And you know what? For me, I screamed and I'm going like, "How in the world do we put Kyle Wright and some other stiff quarterback we've had, and we let those two guys, one guy go to West Virginia and the other guy go to Louisville?" That's, that insane. Guy, that's insane. How do you? They're both South Florida kids. That's insane. West Virginia, really? <laughs> he had that's to go to West Virginia because Miami wouldn't. You know what they said? We're going in a different direction. And I always went like this. What direction is that? <laughs> I go. You know what direction it is? Five and six. Jeez. See, man, you got to remember something. When you when when you're South when you're in South Florida, I want the, the reason why I'm going to take a guy like who's a three star kid. I'm going to take a three-star kid because there's a five-star kid that's a sophomore I want. Mm. So what you do is you recruit the coach. You take that three-star kid, you coach your ass off with great coaches like Jimmy and all these guys. That guy turns out to be a superstar player. Do you want to hear something? Russell Maryland got one scholarship offer. University of Toledo. Toledo. And, and get this, he became the number one overall pick. Okay? Cortez Kennedy, me and Jerome recruited him. This guy had every recruiting thing, and he comes walking in. His mama rose, God rest her soul. She goes like this: "I hear you two guys are trouble." I go, um, "Well, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kennedy, that's kind of not true." She's like, "I hear you the biggest troublemaker. I hear you don't listen." To I'm like, "That's him." He said, "That's him." <laughs> hey, I mean, I mean, look like is Jalen Carter, another guy, Florida kid. How yeah. did he get to Georgia <clears throat> before even going through Miami or? You know, FSU, FSU or, or, the Gators. Floor or the Gators, right? It's just, yeah. it's just, it's crazy to me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So let me ask you this. What are you going to, okay. Are you going to take anything away with this team over the next two games? Arizona, you think Arizona's going to, hey, it's Kyler Murray. 
Now, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to show up. I think the Giants are going to want to beat them the final game. Yeah, I think the Cardinals are going to win. Want to win as well. I mean, granted, it's a it's a it's a road game for them, home game for us. So, I mean, obviously, John Gannon wants to take it to Nick Sirianni. Of course, you know all the different stuff that went on behind the scenes. I'm sure he wants to take his head off. So, um, I think these final two games, they're going to get, they're going to get max effort from these guys, especially if the Eagles keep them in the game, which is what I fully expect. I fully ex- see. Here's the thing: you you had the Giants twenty to down twenty to three. You could have you could have actually killed them bad enough to the point where they they won't even show up for the last game. But now you give them confidence to believe that okay, a couple things bounce our way, we can catch them in that final game. You could have you could you could have won two games in one yesterday, but you didn't. So that's that. And then with the Cardinals game, um, if if you get a big on them, you got to ride that because if you don't and you give them confidence going into that second half, they make a couple plays here and there. All of a sudden, that game looks a lot different. So they can't – to answer your question, there's nothing they can do for me to change how I see them going into the playoffs. There's nothing they can do. At this point, it's just start the playoffs already because I need to know if they're going to make – if they're going to win a game, win two games, lose a I, – I, there's nothing they can do for me. For me. Let's do this. They end the season 13-4. and four. Mm-hmm. They get bounced in the opening round. What changes do you think the owner would make? Gosh, man, they're so unpredictable at this point. I think Brian Johnson's out. I think Brian Johnson's out. Nick Nick's by with 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 wait, the thirteen. Wait, listen, what you're saying: thirteen and four. Every you. guy in the huddle had a career year, and you're going to fire him. I mean, they had career years last year. With so, I mean, he didn't do anything spectacular. So, um, better record versus better teams. Number one, toughest schedule. I'm making a case for him. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just no, 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 no. I know what you're trying to do, and and, and I mean th- that's that's the case he's going to have, right? Listen, we're 13 and four against a, against better teams, uh, you know. But again, the playoffs. See, we don't. We don't gauge this team off regular season. We gauge the team off the playoffs. That's that's, that's the reality. You you're, you're, like, you're not in Chicago. Sealed? Say it again. You think his fate has already been sealed? No, his fate will be sealed. If his fate will be sealed with the opening round playoff loss. So Sean Desai's fate was sealed after two games. I'm with you. I am. I, I mean, because how can you have that train of thought on one side of the ball? Do you think they value the offensive side of the ball more than the defensive side of the ball? Yes, yes. Mentality-wise on winning a game. Yes. Yes, they do. Just they by do. the money they spend. And the way – just think about it. The way they treat that linebacker position is the same way they treated that D.C. position just now. We can put anybody out there. You know what I'm saying? We could we could we could piecemeal it together. That their their demotion of Sean Desai exposed their lack of commitment to that side of the ball. And for me, they look at Brian Johnson as someone that they have an opportunity to still say they groomed this guy to become this. So they're going to give him every opportunity. Hang on, remember he's black. I know, and they're going to give every opportunity to Brian Johnson to prove that he's the guy. Because remember, Sean Desai was an outsource. So if they fire him, they could say, well, he didn't align with our philosophies. But Brian Johnson, they had him at quarterback coach two years in a row. Then you elevate him to OC. Uh, to OC. If he could find a way. So they're going to fire it, two it, black coordinators. It makes them, well, Sean Desai, I think, he's, I think he's Indian, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, they're going to fire um, two. But already, um, they're going to the fill <laughs> The Philadelphia Eagles are going to fire two minority offense and defensive coordinators in the offseason. Never happen. <laughs> well, I mean, you asked me what I think. Uh, you asked me what I, what I think may happen, and if they lose an opening round, opening round to an inferior team, somebody's getting fired. Dan, still, someone's getting I fired. Got it. Like it's no, it's no way. Listen, it's either going to be Nick or Brian. Now, I, last time I checked, they don't just fire head coaches and keep the OC around. That's that's, look at, that's look rare. At, look at what so, Cody Cody put. Cody, no, I'm not I'm not really ripping you. What does that matter? 
you must completely miss the whole conversation about the impression of how that organization wants to be thought of and looked at. Mm -hmm. It matters to them in so many ways, so many ways. The court, the coach putting the charade on with the up downs and screaming on the sidelines mm -hmm. and the impression, keeping a minority in the building when most coordinators, Ken Dorsey got blown out. They kicked him out. They didn't give him a rosy chair up in the booth. <laughs> That's the way. And they do cutaways <laughs> with him on a Monday night game. Right. Nobody does that. That's not normal. It's so, not normal. So, um, unless you're trying to send a message. We talked about this, what, last week, two weeks ago? You know what I mean? How bad would it look on their part? Oh, to, uh, <laughs> are you, you know kidding I mean? me, man? So, so here's the thing again, if they lose in the opening round, remember they have these expectations. They lose in the open round to the Rams or the Seahawks. Someone's getting fired. That Rams Pro team can beat them. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. They're a different team. So, Shouldn't the you. Bucks look different. Listen, I think I, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, okay. So this is where things get really interesting because the playoffs. The, the playoff picture is is very. Um, I got it here. So right now, right now, when it comes to the playoff picture. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are the two. Well, the the Forty Nineers are the one. Eagles are the two seed. Lions are the three seed. Bucks are the four. Cowboys the fifth. Rams six. Seattle Seahawks seventh. Right. If everything stays exactly you sure how the Lions it is, aren't the second seed. They're the third seed. Um, oh, I, I looked at NFL.com and they had the Lions too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking at it right now. Um, okay. ES, yeah. Uh, where are we at? So, um, yeah. My point is though. If the uh, in the first round, the Eagles, if everything holds true, the Eagles will have to play the Seattle Seahawks in the first round. Um, the Lions will have to play the Rams, and the Buccaneers will have to play the Cowboys. Okay. On the road, the, the Buccaneers will have a home game. Yep. The Cowboys have to go on the road. They'll beat them. I'm not now. Hey. Hear me out of this. I'm not. I believe the Cowboys will beat them too. But Cowboys on the road. With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that's playing better, they're more confident. The Cowboys, I don't want them to go into that game thinking it's just going to be a, a walk in the park because of it being a road game, a road game and they haven't proven to be a good road team. All their losses have come on the road, all of them, I, I believe. About that so that's something team. to watch. And then Lions and Rams, I think the Rams can beat the Lions. I do too. I do too. How about this? So the Buccaneers are kind of dicking around with Devin White. They, you know, they're kind of spot playing him. They had mm -hmm. him at a, had a healthy inact or something last week. Um, a word. Know, I did not know that. Yeah, there's really a lot of animosity between him and Jason Light and what's going on. He's 25 years old. They still haven't given him a new contract. He no, played they're, him. they're not going. Actually, actually, guess who else is out the door? Mike Evans. Yeah, he like both of those guys played on good they faith. They were told at the beginning of the year, we're not giving you new contracts. Damn. Speaks you let speaks. Mike Evans walk out the door because as soon as he walks out the door, he's walking into Canton. It speaks to Evans' professionalism because he still played and gave them everything. Oh, he's got big, he's having a great year too, man. Big numbers. And, and for the most part, he stayed healthy. I think he what only yeah. missed maybe a game, if that. So if listen, you're the man. Eagles, would you make a run at Devin White? If I'm Tone, I make a run at Devin White. <laughs> Devin White. If I'm the Eagles. No, I'm just going to draft the guy in the fourth round and try to turn him into Jeremiah Trotter. That's what they, they do. Never done that. Under that's what him. they. That's what they do. Sales, come on. That's what so you're going to three trade. You're going to. You might just just throw the money in a trash can and that's burn it. They, that's what they do. They're not going to invest in that linebacker position the way the. So you don't want to. You don't want to look like Baltimore, or you don't want to have a linebacker like Fred Warner. There, do you think there's a coincidence that those two teams last night were eleven and three facing one another? No coincidence at all. It's the reason their defenses are, are two of the best in the league, and also, you know, with Devin White being due a very, very big paycheck, you really think Harry Rosen is going to drop that money? Oh, on he him ain't dropping twenty million. When, when he when he wouldn't even give TJ Edwards six million, no way, absolutely not. He, he, How about the AFC playoffs? Ravens yeah. would play the Colts; they'd kill them. Mm -hmm. Dolphins, Bills. That I I'll think the you, Bills can. Bills beat them. Well, well, actually, 
actually in the first round it would be Dolphins Colts. Uh, Dolphins Colts and, and then Chiefs Bills. Bills. Chiefs. I think the Bills beat them. I do too. And I think Cleveland. I think beats the Bills the- are coming out of. I think the Bills are going to the AFC Championship game, and it's Bills and Ravens. Yeah, because here's the thing, right? Let's let, let, let's go through it a little bit, right? So Miami Colts, we got Miami in that game, obviously. Chiefs Bills, I think the Bills beat the Chiefs, and then you got Jaguars Browns. I think the Browns think the beat Browns the Jags. Win. I think the Browns win. So then the Ravens will have to play the Bills in the um in the divisional round. Oh, uh, the Bills can catch them. They can. They can beat them. If the I'm, Bills, if the Bills get the Ravens in the divisional round, they're going to the Super Bowl. My 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 prediction of the Bills getting to the Super Bowl will fulfill itself. Yeah. Because the Bills, I picked the Bills to get to the Super Bowl out of the AFC. Listen, I, I I'm I'm I might have to say, I might have to agree with you in terms of I, if the Bills knock out the Chiefs and they knock out knock out the Ravens, I don't I I think they're going to the Super Bowl if that happens. If they beat, because again, this is and plus also this is if everything stays as it is. Yeah, right. This, the, the, you know the seating can still shift. Two a weeks bit, ago, but, the Bills were in the twelve hole. Exactly, and now the Broncos are in the twelve hole because they lost. And the now they're Patriots. in the six. They moved up six spots in two weeks. And exactly, it's crazy with how two things left shift. to play. Mm-hmm. And they're going to win. And they're, they're going to win those last two as well. So, um, the Browns would then have to play against the Dolphins. So the and Bills I, are going to go eleven and fucking six after being six and six. And I think the Browns can beat the Dolphins. Hey man, yo, are you? Are we Go going to Flacco. see? A, hold on, my times out. Are we going to see a Buffalo? Are we, are we going to see a Buffalo Cleveland AFC Championship? Buffalo, <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Cleveland. The Joe Flacco, the Joe Flacco versus Josh Allen. That would be. Insane. Oh my god! And what if Flacco gets to the? It, by the way, if you're the Jets. Are you not kicking yourself in the head for not calling that guy sooner? He might have saved your season. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but look at what he could... threw. What, hey, look. He threw for like 380, right? 340, something like that? Three, what, what did he throw? Yeah, 368. Yo, Three Flacco, touchdowns, man. 368, old man Flacco. Man, he's the kind of guy. Like, he's a fluky guy. Like he, fluky. he's a he's a fluky player. You get him in the playoffs, you never know what you might get. Let me but, just say this to you, man. There's been some cousins got hooked up back in the day when they. When you look at Joe Flacco, he looks like one of them English people. You know that got kind of like the same bloodline a little bit. How come you look like my, my uncle, my uncle, my my aunt Harry? Oh, my know. aunt Harry. That is hilarious. my aunt Harry. You look like my aunt Harriet. I mean, <laughs> are we related? Yeah, she's my sister. Oh, okay. Oh well, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because you know sometimes you look at Joe Flacco, he looks a little weird. He's like, man, that guy's had somebody related to somebody. <laughs> Yo, uh, it's it's entirely possible. Bills and Browns AFC Championship. Bills and Browns, boy, the networks will be going. <laughs> they would lose their mind. They would lose their mind. And also the top teams that we that they had going, Ravens and Dolphins, they would they would pretty much, but the Ravens would be one and done at that point. Here's 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 who the networks want. In my opinion, they want Dak. Eagles or Niners in the NFC title game because the quarterbacks. But because of one's a white guy, they probably want the white guy. Um, in the AFC, I probably would think they want. They may be fatigued on Mahomes. I think. I think. The, I think in the, in the Super Bowl Ravens. they want. Go ahead. Bills and Ravens, but they can't. They can't have that in the AFC title game. So it would be. They probably want Chiefs and Ravens in the title game. That's, I won't put it. Title that, game. That, that sounds good. In the Super Bowl, I think they want. In, in the Super Bowl, I think they would love. They would love Niners Chiefs, but obviously that's not going to be. The, I don't think it's going to be the case. I think their second best option. I think they would love um, nine either Niners Ravens or Niners Dolphins. Tua? Oh, Dolphins, South Florida. They would love Niners Dolphins. You think they want the Eagles back in there? No. I don't think they do. They don't want they don't want the Eagles anywhere. <laughs> Let's be <Yeah>. honest. <laughs> they don't even want the Eagles in the NFC. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> the, the Eagles don't get a fair shake at anything. Absolutely not, man. Are you kidding me? Hey, no, Listen, okay, man. yeah. A Dak and 
back in the Niners, they the, probably want for yeah. TV ratings wise. Yeah. They want that in the, because that's a leg that's a legacy uh yes. matchup. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a yep. lot of history there. Yep, yep. So they would they would love they would love Niners Cowboys and West Coast kind of East Coast kind of mm -hmm. something there for the yeah. conference title games. And they would probably like they would probably love Bills Chiefs again. It's not going to happen. Bills, but they would Chiefs. love they would they would love Bills Chiefs again. I'll tell you what would be great. No, I'll tell you what will get great ratings though, if Ravens and Bills play in that divisional game. That they will. They massive will. ratings. They they will. Allen versus Lamar. Shit, dude. You're talking big TV numbers. Yeah, I think the Bills knocked out the Ravens before, didn't it? I think they did a while back. Yeah, I know the I know the Ravens historically in the, in, in the in the Lamar Jackson era, they lost to the Tennessee Titans twice. They got knocked out by them twice, and I think they lost to the Bills once. What if What if Lamar wins his second title or was second MVP at the age of 26? That's Hall. He he's entering Hall of Fame status. At 26, he would have won. One of them would have been like he easily could be. He, I don't think he's going to be consensus again. But, but, but here, follow me, Tone. I don't really think anybody's had an exceptional year as a quarterback. Not, you know, we always sit here and we're critical of Jalen, but everyone's had a, you know, like a seesaw year this year. I mean, you said something earlier. You, you said something earlier that was really key, right? Everyone's kind of taking their turn being the, yeah, the, the the number one guy, right? Yeah, and, and the number one team, right? And the number one team, and it's no one's had stellar. No one's had a stellar season. Yeah. Guys have had guys have had great runs. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it's been. Maybe um, McCaffrey's been the most consistent player in Miles I'm, Garrett. I'm glad you brought that up. Let me ask you this, right? How much damage did Brock Purdy's MVP candidacy take last night? Huge. Because I to me, I, I I don't I've said that this this is why I've asked you this question numerous times. I don't believe he's the most uh, valuable player in his own huddle. I think, you know, I, I might be I may be going on the limb here. I think because no quarterback has been transcended this year, I think Christian McCaffrey is going to get it. Yeah, but I think those Niner guys may cancel themselves out, and that's how Lamar lands on it. Mm. And because look, you're going to have guys voting for McCaffrey, and you're going to have guys voting for Purdy. Now, here's the thing here. Right. Two white guys. Okay, so, I mean, but what's bad for them is they're on the same team. So, they're going to cancel right. one another out. Right. You might be – you. you it, that, that's, that's very possible. You might be on to something with that. I think you're – you may be right, but still, though, like you said, because of the quarterback position being so yeah. shaky, that may – because you know, because you know what, what what it probably did. It probably that game last night probably proved to a lot of people who probably were on the fence that McCaffrey's the engine, not Purdy. So it probably elevated McCaffrey's status even more after that game last night. Will you say? Tone, Lamar Jackson, no, is I, right I, here, no, right now. No, I, no, I, I, hear you, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Everybody, McCaffrey and them dudes. Yeah, those dudes are down here. That dude <laughs> last night. Hey, he was great last this? night. I want Lamar one was, of them. Lamar was great last <laughs> night, man. He was spectacular. Uh, it's going to come down hey, between Tom, Lamar I and McCaffrey. That's what love you, man. Too. Great job, man. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. I appreciate you too, Sills. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Let's get over to our friend Gary Cobb from Fox 29. And before